I'm Georgie from Real Bread by George and this video is going to focus on shaping. So shaping a round and shaping an oval, also known as a boule and a batard. So I've got two lovely um, bread bannetons here. These are, if you can get them, they're made of rattan or timber. Um, there's all kinds that you can get, but they do make those beautiful artisanal concentric rings around your bread. Um, they hold the dough in shape as it's proving, because when you've got a wet dough, it does tend to want to pancake. Um, and they do help to wick a little bit of moisture from the exterior of your loaf, which helps you get a good crust. Anyway, these are my two. Um, first things we're going to do before we get started with our shaping is just prep the banneton. So I've got some rice flour here and a little tea strainer. You just want to dust your banneton, ensuring that you get rice flour. You can use corn flour, tapioca starch, potato flour, anything starchy really that's going to have a bit of an impervious barrier for the dough on your basket. Getting in on all of those ledges. There is nothing worse than making beautiful dough only to have it stick to your banneton. Okay, they're looking pretty good. So these loaves are the ones we pre-shaped earlier in my pre-shaping video. They've rested for about half an hour and you can see that they've maintained a nice curvature to the bench. That's a sign that the pre-shape has worked, that the gluten skin is strong, that they're not um, flattening too much after rest. They'll always flatten a little bit. I've got some flour here, just plain flour. I'm going to use that to dust, just gently dust, not too much, the top of my loaves. I find that that's a good way to get even coverage as, as opposed to dusting the bench. Now, um, the first one I'm going to do is the round, so the boule. So turn the dough on its head and use your fingers to gently, I'm not squeezing, I'm using the underneath of the dough to gently fan out this circle. Just gives me a bit more surface area to work with. Now I'm going to use the clock analogy again. 12, 3, 6 and 9. I'm going to start at 12. I'm going to stretch the dough back and then fold it over itself, gently prodding it down. 6, the same, gently prodding it down. 3, put it down. 9. Each time coming just past the centre point. I've now got a square. I'm going to do the same thing at the corners of the square. Put it down. Now I'm going to turn this over onto an unfloured portion of the bench. Make sure it's not, it's not floury, otherwise this is just going to glide all over the place. And we're going to round the ball. I'm just throwing the dough under itself, lifting it and attaching all of those seams underneath from where we've just been working. And that's all you need to do. Give it a good sprinkling with some plain flour, pat it over gently so as not to tear that skin, and then upside down into the banneton. Any open bits, just pinch them closed like a dumpling, and put that aside. Clear the flour off your bench. Okay, now we'll do the oval or the batard. Once again, starting in the same way, flipping it over onto its head. This time, instead of fanning out into a circle, we're going to ease the dough out into more of a rectangular shape. I'm going to start at the top, stretch back, and go over, flip the dough around, stretch back, and over. This is now, you think of it like you're folding an A3 piece of paper into thirds to fit in an envelope. Quarter turn so the dough is vertical to your body. Fan out these little fishy tails down the bottom and we're going to get you to tuck and roll from the top all the way down, maintaining the dough within this rectangular shape. You don't want it to sausage out wide. So with each little roll, you want to pull back to build in some tension. Pull back to build in tension. Okay, get some dough on your bench seam is facing the ceiling and we're going to pinch this together. See these open scrolls at the end? Pinch them together like you're making a giant pasty. Okay, lots of flour on your palms. Pat those ends. That's where quite a bit of raw dough is, raw open dough without that skin. You don't want that sticking to your banneton. You can rock it back and forwards in this flour. This section here is not going to be touching the banneton so you do not need to worry about flouring it. 
Okay, once that's nicely floured on all sides and base, pick it up, pop it in your banneton. It may not feel all the way to the edges. In fact, it might only come to here. That's quite okay. As it rests and proves, it will fill up the banneton. A little trick with your rounds is to tighten them up in the banneton. It helps you get a bit more height in your loaf. So you can actually take the dough and do that overlapping cross in the banneton. Now we've got our final shaped loaves. You've got to decide when you want to bake them. You can bake them the same day, waiting for the final proof to take place, any time between an hour and four hours or so, depending on the temperature of your room. Um, you'll see if I poke this, it springs back pretty quickly. If you were planning to bake on the same day, I'd want you to poke it and assess for the dough to spring back very, very slowly and only about halfway. That's a good indication that there's enough development underneath, bubbles essentially, that you have popped when you have prodded it, that it's okay to bake. If it sinks all the way down and doesn't recover, you've probably let it go too far. I suggest pizza dough or bake it and hope for the best. Now, I prefer to fridge proof my loaves. So I would drape these in heavy tea towels or put them in freezer bags cover them in beeswax wraps, something like that to prevent them from dehydrating. And then I'd put them into the fridge for a retard proof. I find that that gives you such a wide window with which you can bake anywhere from eight hours to 50 hours. Although I do find that about 18 hours is the sweet spot. I bake straight from cold. So just preheat your oven, bring your dough out when you're ready to bake, score and off you go. Thank you for taking the time to check out this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Real Bread by George or online at www.realbreadbygeorge.com.au.